the cell membranes of eukaryotic cells and some bacterial cells contain three different types of lipid molecules. So phospholipids, glycopro uh, glycolipids, and cholesterol molecules. Now previously we focused on phospholipids and we said that phospholipids come in two types. We have phosphoglycerides and we also have sphingolipids. Now in this lecture we're going to focus on glycolipids and cholesterol molecules. So let's begin with glycolipids. What exactly are glycolipids? Well, glycolipids are biological molecules that contain a lipid molecule attached via glycosidic bond to a sugar moiety. And that sugar moiety can be a single sugar or it can be some type of polysaccharide, many sugars. Now, glycolipids actually resemble a type of phospholipid we call the sphingolipids, and that's because glycolipids also contain the sphingosine molecule just like sphingolipids do. And this is the general way that we represent a glycolipid. So this is using boxes, and this is using a slightly different format. And we actually use this pictorial representation in just a moment. So basically, the brown structure is the sphingosine, this is the fatty acid, and this is the sugar moiety. Now, based on this representation, we see that the sphingosine actually acts as that backbone. And what that means, it connects the fatty acid and it connects that sugar molecule. Now, this entire fatty acid sphingosine molecule is predominantly nonpolar. And so this is the hydrophobic section that will be found inside the cell interacting with the hydrophobic tails of the other phospholipid molecules. So we see that the sphingosine acts as the backbone of attachment for the fatty acid and the carbohydrate component. And the sphingosine fatty acid component is hydrophobic and that basically means it stretches across the cell membrane interacting with the nonpolar tails of those nearby phospholipids as we'll see in just a moment in this diagram. Now the sugar molecule contains the hydroxyl groups and that makes it polar. So that means the sugar molecule will interact with the, uh, uh, with the hydrophilic sections of those phospholipids, the heads, and it will point to the aqueous extracellular environment. So the carbohydrate moiety of this glycolipid will interact with the aqueous extracellular environment. Now, let's give an example of the simplest type of glycolipid shown in this diagram. This is known as a cerebroside. So in a cerebroside, the sugar molecule is either glucose or galactose. The point is we only have a single sugar moiety, a single sugar molecule. The sugar molecule is attached in this carbon position to this oxygen, the primary alcohol of this sphingosine shown in brown. So this is the primary alcohol group. This is the secondary alcohol group. And it's the primary alcohol that is attached via this glycogen acidic bond to this sugar molecule. Now, this entire long uh, unsaturated hyd hydrocarbon chain is that nonpolar region of that sphingosine molecule. And notice we also have a double bond. That means it is unsaturated. And this nitrogen here is basically attached onto the carbon of the carboxylic acid that is part of that fatty acid. And so these two chains basically extend along this direction as shown in this pictorial representation. And this is the region that will be found deep inside that cell membrane interacting with the nonpolar regions of those nearby phospholipid molecules. And this is the section that will basically interact with the aqueous environment and with the heads, the hydrophilic heads of those nearby phospholipid molecules. Now let's move on to cholesterol molecules. So cholesterol molecules actually have a very special shape and that's because cholesterol molecules are actually steroid molecules. And what that means is they contain a four ring structure as shown in the following diagram. So cholesterol is a steroid, which means it is composed of four fused hydrocarbon rings. Now on one side of those four rings, we basically have a tail that is hydrophobic. So this 
hydrocarbon chain. On the other side, we have a polar group, and this is the hydroxyl group that makes this molecule very, very slightly polar. So the predominant region of this cholesterol is in fact nonpolar, and this entire section will be found inside that membrane. But this tiny region will point to the aqueous environment, and it will interact with the nearby heads of those phospholipid molecules because the heads consist of the phosphate groups and sometimes the alcohol molecules that contain those polar regions. So the hydroxyl group being a polar region basically interacts with the hydrophobic heads of the phospholipids in that cell membrane and therefore it points towards the aqueous environment and the rest of the cholesterol molecule, the four fused rings as well as this hydrocarbon chain, the tail, will basically lie inside the membrane and will be parallel with respect to the nonpolar tails of those phospholipids. Now, to see what we mean by all that, let's take a look at the following diagram, a two-dimensional image of our cell membrane found typically, let's say, in eukaryotic cells such as our own cells of the body. Now, all these blue molecules, so these, uh, these blue molecules with these two uh, purple regions, these are the phospholipids. So, we have the phosphate group shown in blue, and these purple regions are basically those fatty acids. Now, these guys here are basically our glycolipids. So, some glycolipids, let's say, contain two sugar molecules, others contain more sugar molecules, as shown here. So, the, this is the sugar moiety of this glycolipid. And one of these is basically that fatty acid chain, the other one is this hydrocarbon chain of that sphingosine molecule, as shown here in brown. These are basically our cholesterol molecules. This is, let's say, some type of integral transmembrane protein, and this is a peripheral protein that contains a carbohydrate component. So this is an example of glycoprotein. So we have a glycoprotein, a transmembrane protein, we have these phospholipids, in which case we have two types of phospholipids. We have those phosphoglycerides as well as sphingolipids, which we spoke of previously. We have the glycolipid, which we spoke about here, and we also have these cholesterol molecules. So notice that the hydroxyl group shown in orange basically interacts with these blue heads of the nearby phospholipids. And these hydroxyl groups basically point toward the aqueous environment, either into the cell or out of the cell. In the case of these glycolipids, these sugar molecules also interact with these nearby blue heads of the nearby phospholipid molecules, and they also point toward the extracellular aqueous environment towards the outside of the cell as shown here. Now, the final note that I'd like to add about cholesterol molecules is the following. Even though few or even though some bacterial cells, for instance, the mycoplasma contain cholesterol, cholesterol molecules are actually predominantly eukaryotic membrane lipids. In fact, in certain cells of our body, uh, for instance, nerve cells, we have as much as 25% of the membrane of the cell that consists of cholesterol molecules. So we find cholesterol predominantly in eukaryotic cells, more specifically in animal cells. But in bacteria, we commonly find phospholipids and glycolipids, but only a few bacteria actually have the cholesterol within their cell membrane.